Welcome to this webinar series produced by the Commission on Cancer, which reviews the optimal resources for Cancer Care 2020 standards. This webinar will review Chapter 9. Next slide. Remember that all of our new 2020 standards became effective January 1, 2020. I would urge you to review all information in our manual and to look at any changes to the accreditation process, review terms that are defined in our glossary, and look at any specifications by category for our accreditation process. Next slide. Also, you can access the 2020 Standards and Resources page for more information on the standards and upcoming activities. And this is the address for accessing that. Next slide. Chapter 9 deals with research for our accreditation program. Next slide. Clinical research indicates that we have advances in science that are mandatory and assists with ensuring that patient care approaches the highest possible level of quality. This is the thrust of this particular standard and rationale. Next slide. Now the scope of the standard, 9.1, shows that program categories require a percentage of subjects to be accrued to eligible cancer-related clinical research studies each calendar year. There should be a clinical research coordinator identified that reports activities to the Cancer Committee based on clinical research information and the annual enrollment in clinical research studies. The coordinator should, should establish a screening policy and procedure. This should identify participant eligibility for clinical research studies and how to provide clinical research information to subjects. Through the clinical research coordinator, the cancer committee must evaluate and assess the eligibility and screening process to identify any barriers that exist to the enrollment and participation of patients in clinical trials. Next slide. The scope of the standard should show that research studies that are eligible for this standard should be cancer related. They must be approved by an internal or external institutional review board, or IRB, that is responsible for the review and oversight of the research program. And they should have informed written patient or subject consent, unless consent is waived by the IRB. Next slide. The scope of this particular standard also shows that there are certain categories of cancer-related clinical research activity that are eligible for accrual. These include basic science, device feasibility, diagnostic aspects, health services research, prevention, screening, supportive care, and of course, treatment. Next slide. Additional categories of cancer-related clinical research studies will be cancer-specific biorepositories or tissue banks if the accredited facility has access to them. They could be economics of care related to cancer care. There could be genetic studies in clinical research. Or there could be patient registry activities underlying cancer research focuses. Next slide. Clinical research accrual uh, does have certain exceptions. Humanitarian use device studies cannot be counted as an accrual under this particular standard. Next slide. For this standard 9.1, compliance is calculated in showing that the denominator is the actual number of analytic cases at the institution, the patients who are actually treated with first course therapy. The numerator represents the number of subjects enrolled in the eligible research studies who were either diagnosed or treated at the facility, 
diagnosed and treated at the facility and enrolled in a cancer-related program within a staff physician's office, or diagnosed at the facility and then referred by your program or facility for enrollment onto a cancer-related clinical research study through another program or facility. Or they could be referred to your program or facility for enrollment onto a cancer-related clinical research study through another program or facility. So keeping track of all of the patients is an important job of the cancer research coordinator and ultimately the cancer committee. Next slide. Now, there are important aspects of counting accruals. If a subject is enrolled in two different trials or studies, then the subject may be counted in the numerator twice. However, it qualifies as one accrual if one subject is enrolled in two arms of one protocol or one subject is enrolled in a substudy of one protocol. This is a nuance that must be kept in mind by the clinical research coordinator. Next slide. Now the manual shows that there are certain requirements for each of our categories in our accreditation process. And this slide indicates those percentage requirements. I would urge that you look carefully at the manual for your own category and to identify your own requirements at your institution. Next slide. Standard 9.1 shows that the clinical research coordinator must track and report all aspects of the trials programs to the cancer committee. And this includes the specific clinical research studies, where the subjects were accrued, including the trial or the study name, or the clinical trial dot gov trial number if this was an NCI or government trial. It has to include the number of subjects accrued, the open clinical research studies that are available at the institution, any new trials that are added to your institution, and if the required accrual percentage is not met, the report identifies those factors, why we didn't meet it, and identifies an action plan to address those particular factors. Next slide. The on-site documentation will be reviewed at the accreditation visit, and these will include any tracking documents that detail the number of subjects accrued to the specific clinical research studies. These will all be uploaded into the PRQ, as well as the Cancer Committee minutes and the policy and procedure that governs clinical research at your institution. Next slide. Compliance will be based on the fact that the program has a screening policy and procedure to identify participant eligibility for clinical research studies and how to provide clinical trial information to subjects. These processes must be assessed to identify and address barriers to the enrollment process. The number of accruals to cancer-related studies is important and must meet or exceed your particular category requirement. The clinical research coordinator must report all required information to the cancer committee, and this must be documented annually in the cancer committee minutes. Next slide. Standard 9.2 deals with Commission on Cancer Special Studies. What are these special studies? Well, they're hypothesis based studies designed to evaluate patient care, they sent benchmarks, they provide feedback to improve patient care in cancer programs. Now, the Commission on Cancer will periodically design and conduct special studies. And based on study criteria, certain selected accredited programs will be required to participate in each study for standard compliance. The cases included in these studies and the due dates of these studies will be specified in the study documentation provided by the Commission. To fulfill the standard, all selected programs must submit all requested information for the cases identified by the specific 
deadline outlined. Next slide. Regarding special studies, the program uploads all required documentation or data as required for the special study. And these special studies are used to identify new concepts and new directions by the Commission on Cancer. This concludes our discussion of Chapter 9.